Up dog. Up dog. Up dog. Up dog sports talk. Hello, 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 and welcome to Up Dog Sports Talk. My name is Matt Miller. That is Justin McGovern. What's going on, <laughs> Justin? Well, Matt, guess what? College football is officially back. We had a yeah. few Euro games this week, but we are not here to talk about college football and all of Nebraska's problems. We are here <laughs> to talk NFL. And in a couple weeks, it will be back and it will be glorious. Today, we are getting towards the end of our preview series. It is time to talk about the NFC North. And I would say first on our list here is the Minnesota Vikings. Matt, what are your thoughts? Vikings. Um, Goal. (laughs) They are going to have to um, run the ball a lot. And uh, assuming Dalvin Cook can stay healthy, They'll probably uh, finish halfway decent. Kirk Cousins is an absolute liability, though. Um, he is not a halfway decent um, complement to the run game, but if you have to rely on his arm, you're not going to amount to much. So, like, the defense is always a Mike Zimmer defense. They just plug-and-play players, and then they're going to hold their own. So, took a step back last year. Now they have um, – little bit of experience in that secondary and they just signed harrison smith for four years 64 million dollars so he got um, paid i know man he got some dough (laughs) um but i mean it's like totally worth it because like he is he's been one of the most reliable safeties for like however long eight years or so um and like so it's totally worth having him there and especially with the uh loss of uh trey waynes and uh whoever the other guy was, they both, I think they both went to the Bengals and then, um, <laughs> but uh, now that they have a little bit of experience at corner, um, they might be able to be pretty solid on defense, but I mean, their O line has been a question mark for so long. Absolutely. And I mean, you hit the point there, basically the Vikings formula under Zimmer is run the ball well and play good defense the reason why they struggled last year was because that second part, the defense did not look that good. Um, they are hoping to have upgrades there. The passing game is only okay. I mean, Kirk Cousins is somewhat teetering on being a liability. For if I die, I, I die. die. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, Kirk Cousins is potentially the liability of this team. Um, I mean, they do have some strong receivers in Thielen, and Jefferson obviously was fantastic last year. But they just, um, again, pass protection has been a problem. Um, they kind of even things out. You know, they're lo- losing a left tackle and then drafting a new one. So they kind of got younger there. Um, but, yeah, it will remain to be seen just how – Receiving core looks pretty good. I mean, Justin yes. Jefferson, I've been, I'm really excited to see what he can do this season. And the injury to Irv Smith Jr. may be an impact early in the year. He was definitely a key player that needed to step up for this team of um, Kyle Rudolph now gone. Yeah. And... I mean, it was looking like Irv Smith um, is, is going to miss, like, a, the first part of the season. Yeah. It doesn't look like he's going to be out for a whole, like, the whole season. So it, if they can get him back and he – as at least 80% healthy and can just catch the football. I think they can make a decent run on offense, but it depends on which Kirk Cousins shows up. Monday night Kirk, they're not going to have a chance. Uh, London Kirk, maybe. But yeah, yeah, definitely. And I, I think that is a key injury, though. This team relies heavily on the tight ends, and now for at least a few weeks, they have nothing at the position. So that will definitely be a big factor as well. But it is time to move on to the next team, the Detroit Lions. (laughs) Motor City Dan Campbell. I'm going to give my first thoughts here. And Matt, you will probably agree with me. Uh, Anyone who's watched the show will understand where we stand on this. But um, when he was first hired, it was like, who is this guy? And then his opening press conference. There's never been a coach 
who has ever won me over in an opening press conference until Motor City Dan Campbell came into the fold. This man is electric, and he's going to lead this team. It may just not be this year. Yeah, um, he is by far one of my favorite coaches to watch this year. Um, receiving core looks terrible. They have uh, Tyrell Williams and Amon Ross St. Brown. And then, like, guys that no one's ever heard of. Um, <laughs> yeah, and St. Brown, he's a rookie as well. So. Yeah, so we don't exactly know what he's going to do. I mean, I, I, as much as I bashed on Jared Goff and Sean McVay's offense, depending on how they go about this, Jared Goff can actually walk away from this situation better off than he was in L.A. Because, like, hmm. If if really? if he can get the targets, um, if he can get like the rapport with the receivers, he's not a terrible quarterback. He's just not top tier. So if they if he can steadily improve and Motor City Dan Campbell can bite off some kneecaps, um, <laughs> the liability is their defense. They just yes. have they've never had a defense. And I mean, this year's definitely no exception. They're pretty much starting over there on the defensive side. Yeah. Um, it's, yeah, it's not looking good at all over there, except, I mean, they, obviously they've added some defensive linemen. Definitely at least Plus now they running have, backs. Yes. And obviously we we're going to mention like the running backs look pretty good with Swift and um, Jamal Williams there. If Swift can get healthy, he seems he's still questionable there? if he can make the opener. Did AP get signed there? No, AP did not resign there. Oh, I saw there. I saw he went for a visit, but I wasn't sure. But um, Todd Gurley went there for a visit too and did not yeah. sign. He's not um, sign. Probably not. Probably not until later in the season if someone's looking for a veteran. Yeah. Um. But yeah. So in the offensive line, definitely it looked Improved. okay compared to some other alignment. Um, it could stand to improve. Penne Sewell, the first round pick, was supposed to improve that. So far, we have mentioned this on previous episodes of the show. He has not entirely panned out so far. Um, definitely, there's a pattern of players that opted out last year not entirely being ready for the NFL yet. Um, yeah, Sewell, one of them. And but, it it seems like the the list of players that the Bengals could have taken, um, the top two were Penny Sewell and Jamar Chase. Neither of them have done well. I watched um, Penny Sewell in. Um, Someone had like a video camp or a football camp video, and uh, he just looked bad. He was getting beat by a guy that I had never heard of. So <laughs> that um, the Lions have a long way to go. Mm -hmm. They have they now have the right leadership to do it. Yeah, I would say they finally have a vision here with Motor City Dan Campbell in the fold. Um, they have a GM who definitely is. His main focus is the lines. Yeah, so he came from to... L.A., so he and Goff know each other. Yeah, and they want to strengthen the offensive defense lines the most. So mm -hmm. that is where they're starting first. They're starting inside out. Um, but this will be a rough year one. This will be a rough year one for them. Now, moving on here, and we have heard a lot about this team this offseason, the Green Bay Packers. Now, Tons of drama surrounding this man, this legend of a man here, Aaron Rodgers. Um, he was not happy with the front office, and he made it very clear that the front office was who he wasn't happy with when he returned to camp in this spectacular fashion here that you'll see um, the team and the players seem very united around him. This is a team that's united. Um, yeah. They're united with their coach. They just don't like the front office. I don't think – No I one likes Kuntikuns. <laughs> I know Guntekun stinks. Um, so yeah, I don't think it's going to translate to the field, um, all the offseason drama, but there is definitely a lot to talk about this team. But having Aaron Rodgers back definitely is a strong start. Uh, Matt, what are your thoughts on the rest of the roster? They had the biggest offseason story. Will Aaron Rodgers be traded to the Denver Broncos? Will Aaron Rodgers retire completely? Will Aaron Rodgers ever play in the Green Bay Packers uniform again? He answered that by showing up to camp. And yep. he's committed to this year's team, 2022 and beyond. We have no idea. I don't think he does really, but I think he has his sights set on somewhere else after that. Um, but, I mean, this is, this is literally their time. Like, they have to do it now. 
or is, else they may lose him forever. So yes, absolutely. Um, if I'm Gute Kuntz, I'm going to try to get Jordy Nelson out of retirement. I'm going to try to talk any receiver like into <laughs> just like they just need a number two receiver. They don't need a number one. They already have a number one. Plus, they have three really good running backs. So and a really good offensive line. They just need to get another guy open. I mean, they, they have Randall Cobb, but like they still need another guy. Um, if they want Aaron Rodgers to come smiling like he is in this picture, um, defense has always been that liability. Uh, secondary doesn't look too, too bad. Uh, I wouldn't say it's the greatest in the division, but um, they're going to be in some shootouts this year. Yes, definitely. Um, yeah, defense line looks like it'll be pretty good. Um, the secondary, they use the first round pick to address some issues there. We'll see how that pans out for them. Um, but yeah, definitely the receiver question is a big one. I think getting Cobb is a huge start. Um, I'm not really sure who they can acquire. I think Jordy Nelson's pretty happy on his farm at this point. T.O. and any Chad Johnson are back. looking at comebacks. <laughs> yeah, let's get T.O. and Chad in here and see how it goes. <laughs> But, um, but yeah, joking aside, I, I think they pretty much have the receiving core they will go into the season with. We'll just see how it works out. Um, but yeah, all in all, it wasn't a bad off season for the Packers when you consider all the noise around them. It could have been a whole lot worse. Um, yeah, we'll just see how this team looks. Yeah. So what we got next? Up next, we have the last team in a preview. The Chicago Bears. Bear down. Bear down. <laughs> now, I was boots on the ground. I saw their preseason game against the Buffalo Bills um, a couple weeks back. And I can tell you from first look, when the first time I saw this picture here of Visor Andy, I was like, oh, man, this is a new Andy Dalton. This guy is recreated. He's got the visor. He's got the beard. He is going to have the best season of his career. I was ready for Visor Andy, a whole new Andy. Um, seeing him live and in that game, he looked like the same Andy Dalton. <laughs> I mean, he's he, not look good there. And the offense line was just as bad as it was last year for the Bears. The play calling was just as all over the place and disorganized as it was last year. Um, Matt, do you think this pre? Obviously, we don't want to read too much in the preseason, but these preseason struggles look awful lot like the regular season struggles. Is this going to translate over the regular season? Uh, it will because Andy Dalton's draft profile was literally spot on. Whoever uh, came out with that was an absolute genius because his liabilities have been his shortcomings in the NFL. And um, I personally believe Andy Dalton should start week one because of thousands of different reasons, but, uh, I wasn't going to use this for the show originally, but I saw a graphic the other day that's, that showed the list of quarterbacks that sat out or that did not start week one. And, like, of course, Deshaun Watson came in at halftime of his first game, and then it showed, like, Pat Mahomes sitting out for a year, and then it showed, like, all those quarterbacks. And then over in the column of um, rookie starters, it showed Joe Burrow, Sam Darnold, but just a bunch of names that are like, like so far, Joe Burrow's second year, we're waiting to see what, what he does. I'm rooting for him. I'm a big fan of him. Yes. But as far as Sam Darnold goes, having him on that list should show you that it doesn't always work out. Sam Darnold was high on everyone's radar coming into the NFL. And now he's on a completely different team and we're going to see where he goes with that. But um it seems like the best strategy is to let your young quarterback learn the NFL, no matter how bad the starter is in front of you. Now, yeah. Pat Mahomes had Aaron Smith or Alex Smith in front of him. So that kind of helps because uh, Al Alex Smith can hold his own. Yeah, he also Alex had Andy Smith had the best season of his career before Mahomes yeah. stepped in. <laughs> and then, um, I mean, Deshaun Watson had, I think, Matt Schaub starting in front of him. So that's why he started week one. But I'm pretty like, sure Dalton, it was someone random like Tom Savage or something. Like someone. he had a terrible quarterback in front of him. But if you look Andy's at the list, it's Andy will get you a few wins. You can't rely on him. They have the pieces to give Andy what he should have had in Cincinnati a good defense, a good receiving core. 
shaky offensive line, they can get somewhat by with that Um, because we watched them do terrible things to the Packers last year in week one, or was that two years ago? I don't know. They did. They compete every year, it seems like. And then it's like Trubisky was the reason why they didn't get over that hump. Now, if you run the ball a little bit more, throw shorter throws, and then open up the deep pass, Andy Dalton's your guy for that. Mm-hmm. And then if Andy Dalton struggles, go ahead and throw Justin Fields in. But you don't want to throw him in against Aaron Donald and Jalen Ramsey and in L.A. <laughs> in their stadium with the first time having fans in that stadium. It's just not going to be a very good recipe. You're literally going to shake that dude's confidence, and he's not mm-hmm. going to play well the rest of the year, and the entire city is going to be on his back, and he's not going to play there, and then it's going to be all downhill from there. So, like, you have to look ahead on what the long-term effects are going to be of starting him in week one. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. Um, they should definitely take their time with it. Um, let's see how this team looks in the regular season. Um, definitely, you know, David Montgomery's back at running back. He was the ball carrier last year. Obviously, everyone behind him pretty much sucked because Cohen got hurt. Um, Cohen still not back. I'm not sure no. when he will be back. Um, they added Damian Williams. He looked awful in the preseason game that I went to. He fumbled once and got nowhere on all his carries, but that team just looked disjointed from the start. So I don't know what to read into that. Um, the defense definitely. It'll be solid as always, but um, there's definitely been some transition at corner, and they're just trying to figure that one out. Oh, and something we didn't get to no- um, notate uh, on our previous show, the Raiders tried to trade for a Cleo Mac to get him back. Like, <laughs> the Raiders tried to see if they could get Mac back. Like, why would the Bears ever return that phone call? Like, that's just dumb. Yeah, they're, the the Bears, Bears are in win-now mode. It's Matt Nagy's job. Like, if they don't win this season, he's gone. Yeah, Ryan absolutely. Pace is probably gone. You know, although he, Ryan <laughs> Pace has done a halfway decent job building that defense and building that roster, getting those players in. Mm-hmm. But he's on the hot seat too. Yeah. Sorry, Raiders. You cannot um, make a comeback from your mistake. <laughs> well, Matt, I'd say it's finally time for us to give our finishing order. How do you think they're going to end up? I think that it's going to be Packers at one. Uh, I don't know. Judging by the opening uh, day starters, I'm going to have to go with the Vikings at two, then the Bears at three, and the Detroit Lions at four. Um, I just think Kirk Cousins will handle things better than Andy Dalton will, but it's hard to say because that Bears defense is just so good that I yeah. almost want to put him at two. Like, I just, I just for some reason, can't with Andy Dalton as a starter. Yeah, I think there's just a lot of turmoil around Chicago. Um, and, I mean, definitely I would have to agree with you. Pretty, pretty obviously, the only debate is between two and three. Packers number one, Lions number four. It's just between the Vikings and the Bears. And I, too, am actually thinking the Vikings. I, I thought that even if the Vikings make a big enough improvement on defense, they could be a sneaky wild card contender. But the one big factor with the wild card is um, they, they got a tough draw this year. They get they have to play the AFC North. Um, that's a really tough division to get go up against. Three of the four teams and, are playoff teams. And, yeah, and that is a huge disadvantage. Whereas you look at the NFC West, where they have a bunch of playoff contenders, and they all get to go up against the NFC East this year. Yeah. So – that will be – it'll be really tough to get a second wild card team out of this division like we had last year. But um, definitely I see the most promise in the Vikings doing that. Yeah. So pretty much on the same page with that. Um, we'll probably get a lot of uh, texts and calls and angry fan letters from our friends in Chicago. Um, <laughs> and probably a couple from our friends in Detroit, but uh, they, they don't matter. Uh, got anything else, Justin? Nope. Um, that is all for me, from me. Um, just everyone enjoy your day and, um, have a good one. See you guys.